Good morning. Today on Spotlight, a conversation with two music industry legends, one from Detroit, one from Brooklyn, both pioneers and torchbearers of the world famous Motown sound. Otis Williams, the last surviving original member of the Temptations R&B singing group and his manager of 56 years, Shelly Berger. They came back to the city where it all began to help promote the homecoming of Ain't Too Proud, the Tony Award winning Broadway musical, now on tour at the Detroit Opera House. And later on our Sunday morning program, Tony Michaels and Michael Larry get us ready for this year's Woodward Dream Cruise. It's Sunday, August the 14th. I'm Chuck Stokes and this is Spotlight. Dr. Otis Williams, let me take you way back. 1964, Smokey Robinson comes up to you and your colleagues and says, I've got a song for you. Did you ever in your wildest dreams think that two words, the temptations, would become household words and musical legacy in America? I had no inclination that this group of mine would take on such a dynamic name for what we do, most imitated a vocal group of all time, didn't have any idea. All we wanted to do was just sing and have uh, hit records and sing for the girls to the girls. <laughs> <laughs> Always about the ladies. Always about the ladies. <laughs> At what point in this long journey, this legacy, did it occur to you, okay, I'm sort of the chosen one here. I'm the one that has to be the historian. I'm the one that has to keep this legacy going. I'm the last of the original five, and it sort of rests on my shoulders. It's very interesting that you should say that because that feeling hit me when I lost my, my best friend, Melvin Franklin. Him and I had been together. He was 16, I was 17. And when I lost him in 1995 or six, thereabout. I said to myself, oh, this history for real falls on you now. You know, because Melvin was mostly the one that did all the talking because everybody loved to hear him with that deep, wonderful bass bo a voice that he had. Real and deep his, voice. Yeah, and he had that kind of personality that people would gravitate to real quick. And, uh, but after I lost him, that's when I said, well, Otis, you started the history and now you got to carry it on because everybody else is gone. Uh, but it started with you. You wrote the book then the miniseries, now the musical. I know you want to leave me, but I refuse to let you go. If I have a big lead for your sympathy, I don't mind because you mean that much to me. Ain't too proud to be. And sweet darling, please don't leave me. Don't you go. Ain't too proud to be. Talk about this musical and what you hope audiences get out of this. Well, I think once uh, they come and see The Temptations uh, Life Story, it's not all about glory. You know, as, if anyone knows about The Temptations history, well, there's been sadness. I've lost key members, you know, aside from having such a wonderful uh, height and uh, raising height of, uh, you know, being successful. Sure. Along the way, there's been stories to tell about uh, me losing members, how we stay together after that, why we stay together after that, different guys coming in and what have you. And uh, I just learned something about myself at the process because I learned that uh, that was in me. You know, being raised by two wonderful grandmothers, they instill a lot of qualities and stick to it And uh, that's what I tried to do because, like I said, first and foremost, when I came here to Detroit, and I'm about, uh, about 14 or 15 years old, and they were giving uh, big rock and roll shows at the Fox Theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Fox Theater has been noted as the second largest uh, indoor theater. Radio City is the first. To see 5,000 people on there about acting what crazy over what people were doing, five guys were doing on stage. And I was, like I said, about 15, 16 years old. I was impressed with that. I said, that's what I want to do. Now, I must give credit to uh, the late, great Paul Williams 
when we got together, we started off singing uh, 100 Pounds of Clay by Gene McDaniels. But we were standing there saying. So one day Paul said, <clears throat> excuse me, he said, look, now we're not just going to stand and sing. You know, we have to become exciting. We got to uh, have moves. We got to be very sexy. We got to sell sex. <laughs> I never will forget Eddie Kendrick said, oh, Paul, you know I can you know, uh, dance. I'm still. And Paul told that, don't worry about the cone. We call him cornbread because he loved cornbread. Uh -huh. uh, he said, don't worry about the cone. What I'm going to show you, you'll be able to do. I'm 80, still doing the movies. And still doing it. Yeah. Still doing it. I want people to understand the, the, what these people, what these five men went through to accomplish what they gave to people for the years that they were together, and especially what Otis Williams has accomplished in keeping this group together. You understand that the Temptations were supposed to be out of the business 30 years ago. You lost David Ruffin, you lost Eddie Kendricks, you lost Melvin Franklin, you lost Paul Williams, and the group is as exciting and vibrant and contemporary today as it was back then. Otis Williams is the gentle giant. He keeps it very, very quiet until he has to be heard. When he has to be heard, man, stand back. Walk softly, but carries a big oh, stick. There is no question about it. There is no question about it. He is the great, great puppet master under the greatest puppet master, Barry Gordy. The spotlight returns inside the Ain't Too Proud musical. musical when people go to see it right and we hope everybody goes to see it they'll see the good the bad and the ugly a little bit they'll see yeah what you all went through oh, over yeah. the last 60 years yeah first and foremost we're human you know the life that we live don't mean that we live in a, a little cocoon no life even temptations or whomever touches us all and sometimes it's in the negative sense it ain't all about being positive. We would like to be as humans, but no. Every day the sun don't shine, but when it do, we appreciate it. It'll be a truthful story. Otis, tell me what it was like the first time you sat down in the audience at the musical, Ain't Too Proud. What was your reaction? I was very impressed. That was Berkeley. By the time it got to Broadway, oh man, I could, you could have tipped me over with a feather. I never would have believed that my life story about the Timps on Broadway. You know, I've been up and down Broadway, going to some of the plays, but this time I'm coming to see my play about the Temptations. And uh, touching, never would have guessed it, like I said, from being Texas County, Texas to here. And when I stop and do, uh, go back in the recesses of me thinking, that was meant to be. What has happened to me and the rest of the guys, even though some of them are no longer here, that was destined. What is so exciting for, for, for Otis and for me is at this moment in time, Juwan Jackson, who is also a Detroiter, who played Melvin Franklin on Broadway, has become a member of The Temptations. So this is, this is the, the circle being squared <laughs> um, and I said to Juan yesterday, as, because the guys from ATP uh, performed at the Motown Museum function yesterday, and uh, I, I said to Juan, okay, I said, you can look at them now and say, yeah, you are playing The Temptation. I am a temptation. A look at the future of Motown and The Temptations when Spotlight returns. gave the Motown Museum a gift the other day. Yes. Uh, the signature for Mike's. Right. Uh, all of us who grew up to Temptations and would go to see you, we knew that when yeah. that microphone came yeah. out, 
by itself, we knew the temptations were there and you were coming out. And it was such a signature thing because you all were the first to do it. Only group to have that. Where'd that come from? One day we were rehearsing for the Copacabana and we were doing so well, we just had to talk. At the time we had Charlie Atkins who was choreographing us. Maurice King, our vocal coach, John Allen on the keyboards, making sure that the music was right. And we had rehearsed and we just felt good about what we uh, were doing. So David Ruffin said, man, it should be uh, cold if we had a microphone where, you know, with four heads on it. I said, I like that, David. But the thing that we tried to figure out, now who could we get to make that? And at that, that particular time, Lon Fontaine was uh, choreographing us. And Lon said, I think I know somebody who can do it. And he was connected with Star Trek. Mm -hmm. So that first mic was made by somebody that was connected to uh, Star Trek. And uh, when we got it and we rehearsed with it and got used to it, you know, uh, it became the T in Temptation. That's the last microphone, David, Eddie, Dennis, Melvin, myself, Richard Street, and Glenn Leonard performed on. Last one. Last one. So I gave that one to uh, Robin Terry uh, of uh, Motown. If there's one thing that music oftentimes does similar to sports, it can bring people together even when they're divided on social or civil rights or even constitutional type of issues. Right. Do you credit yourself and your colleagues for having really successfully done that throughout your career? I want to say something that Miss Ducksworth liked uh, for, uh, to hear me say. At that time, we were like a soothing ointment to a troubled soul. The 60s, like I've always said, was the most tumultuous decade within the last 100 years. We are a product of that. Or we were shot at. We were used the N-word and all that on us. And I tell the story about, uh, we played Columbia, South Carolina, 64, 65. The classic temps were together. And when we got to the venue, there was a long rope right down the center of the auditorium. So we stood there and we said, you got to be kidding. Really? So we went and did what we had to do. Came back to that same place the next year. There was no rope. Wow. Blacks and whites sitting together, side by side, high-fiving high each other, and booty banging. They were enjoying the music. If it wasn't that it was such a hot day, all of us, except Eddie, were sweaters, you know, press rhyme. And if it hadn't been for that, they would have seen our uh, five guys up on stage crying. We played Atlanta, Georgia this past uh, February. And I always would go back into uh, my mind and say, I wonder who put that doggone rope down that uh, theater. Derek said, Otis, and someone would like to talk to you. I said, okay, and we had just finished doing the show. And I got dressed and came out. And uh, he said, Mr. Williams? I said, yes, sir, and shook hands. Now, I'm 6'2". He was about 6'3". He said, I am the little boy that laid that rope down the center of the arm. You got it, kid. Mm -mm. And he said, I wasn't raised that way, but they made me do it. But I had to let you know. And I always wondered who it was. Derek came up to me and he said, you know who that was? I said, no, I know. He said, no, this, that was God sending him to you to let you know that's who it was. That is. Wow. Hmm. You all perform countless times on the Ed Sullivan Show. Yes. Uh, and not too long ago, I was reminded of one time you performed there in, a, in the audience was Congressman John Conyers, the late congressman from Detroit. Uh, and Ed Sullivan, after you all sang, had him come up and just recognize the fact. He's a young congressman at that yeah. point. Uh, but that gets to your point that you all have always been just one step ahead of the social issues and the things that are really important in this country and have used your music yes. to cut through all of this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's a wonderful ointment. That's a great uh, medicine, you know, is for people to release their fears or whatever and, and from within by what we do on stage. Life is what it is and might as well enjoy it while we can. And I tell people, I'm going to ride the half the horse. When I get the horse, it's going to be bald. So my attitude, I always try to think up. <laughs> you know. I heard you say the other day that they always talk about Detroit 
it's the Motor City <laughs> and the yeah. Big Three. Yeah. But you said it's really the Big Four. Detroit has always been known for the Big Three, Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler. Not anymore. They can still say Ford, uh, General Motors, and Chrysler, but they got to add Motown. And somebody told me last night, he said, Otis, you should put Motown first and then the, the three corporations. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, a, that's not a bad idea because uh, people from all over the world still come to see Motown. I'm ha happy to be part of history. What's the future of the Temptations legacy? Any idea? I, I can't really answer that at this moment because when Otis decides that he personally does not want to go out on the road, we will keep moving with Temptations 2.0. Without, without that strength, without that backbone of Otis, I don't know what the future will bring, but the Temptations, because of Ain't Too Proud, will carry on because they'll be all over they'll be all over the world so so the group itself may not be doing live performances at one point ain't too proud will be there to salve the soul as mr otis williams would say and no one will forget those two words the temptation when i was growing up if you were a star you were a, you were a star but then all of a sudden you had to be a superstar. You know, hey man, we are the mic drop. The Temptations, Motown, that's it baby. You ain't getting any better than that. And that's from the kid from Brooklyn. Coming up, two leaders take us inside this year's Woodward Dream Cruise. We'll be right back. Okay, if there's one thing I think people are ready for right now after another year of dodging the pandemic and a big political year, it's something like the Woodward Dream Cruise. Would you guys agree with me, Tony? Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, people are itching for great events and the Woodward Dream Cruise presented by Ford is right there, Chuck. Uh, Michael will, I'm sure, say, the, say pretty much the same thing. This is, this is one of those amazing, amazing regional Oakland County Detroit events and people are ready. Absolutely. And you know, with the nine participating communities, it really helps when we all work as a team to try to make this more than just about, you know, a day of cars, but it's also about celebrating the, the auto industry as a whole, not just about classic cars, but about today and about the future and also about creating an atmosphere where families can come together and, and really have a good time for the day. We uh, already have over 500 Ford Mustangs registered for the big day and we standard, we get about 650. Okay. So yeah, it's the largest car show during the Woodward Dream Cruise. And here we are now in this open air spread out um, over 16 miles. And we think it's, it's really, really, truly right in that sweet spot of people being able to feel good and do great things outside and take this wonderful event in. You can take from grandma to grandpa down to the little babies uh, and it's just good family fun event. Yeah, I, uh, I find that I, I've actually seen it where grandfathers will see a car drive by during the dream cruise and they'll share that, that history with their kids and their grandkids about when they used to drive that car. Mm -hmm. And it, I've actually seen where they all almost come into uh, bearing tears in their eyes because they cherish those memories and they see them still because there's so much love and passion for the car that you have people who are restoring them or maintaining them to keep them, you know, uh, the history alive by having them still available to drive. Uh, you know, we just, have come off awards from Time Magazine for the city of Detroit and also uh, Travel and Leisure, uh, you know, saying Mackinac Island is the best island in the continental U.S. 
all of this, whether you're in Southeast Michigan or you're in the West or the Northern part of the state, is great publicity for this state, pure Michigan. Yeah, no question. And yeah, Detroit named great city, Time Magazine. And you think about the events and the things that happen in our city, the region, the state, everything is world-class. The Woodward Dream Cruise presented by Ford is world-class. It's the largest of its kind. But here's how some of this happens and how we're able to fill up hotel rooms and have people come from all over America. It starts with, of course, Ford Motor Company being presenting sponsor. That's huge. Um, it also, and I am going to blow the WXYZ horn here. Okay. But That's all event, right. <laughs> the show you do, and people need to know this, is syndicated uh, across America in on 80 different stations, which includes New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, San Francisco, and so on. So people are watching this event in those massive great cities. And, and then it's about our city itself and how people show up and want to be a part of great things. Uh, all this talk about electric cars, will there be any attention on electric vehicles when we see, when we're looking at all those throwback cars? Oh yeah, to be continued. <laughs> we'll have some surprises for you this year, yes. Uh, we're very proud of having a Ford Motor Company as our presenting sponsor. Uh, this is their fifth, fifth year, Tony. Oh, I and, so, yeah. and people need to understand that it is with that sponsorship, that, that support, that that's what helps make this happen. There is the Woodward Cruise, which is the cruisers that enjoy their driving on Woodward, but then there's also all those great events that happen on this adjacent to Woodward Avenue. Mm -hmm. They help make all this happen. Well, that's it for this week. Special thanks to Otis Williams, Shelly Berger, Tony Michaels, and Michael Larry. Make sure you go see Ain't Too Proud and check out the Dream Cruise. I'm Chuck Stokes. Have a great week. Thank you.